I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of light. To comfort him in the sorrows he bore for my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Verse number four. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Think about this last verse now. When with the ransom in glory, his face I at last shall see. T'will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Matthew, for playing this evening. Uh, let's be praying for Miss Tammy. She was out of town with her job this evening and unable to make it back here in time for service. So let's be praying for her as she travels. Um, is there any um, other special prayer requests on this side of the auditorium that we can be praying for? Uh, we need to keep uh, Miss Dot and Brother Leon Stanley in our prayers this evening. But anything else uh, on this? Okay. Let's be praying for Brother Tom and Miss Ella Mae Thurman. Um, yes, Miss Rachel. Mm. Okay, we'll be praying for that situation, Miss Rachel. Yes, Pastor English. Okay, we'll be praying for, for that situation as well this evening. Any other special prayer requests on this side of the auditorium? All right. What about this side of the auditorium? Yes, Miss Carolyn? Yeah, uh, continue praying for Mildred Williams. She's, um, they've called the family. They've called the hospital. They've called the family. Um, and she's been responsible for 
Well, we're sorry to hear that. We'll be praying for that family. Well, that is good news. That's good news, but it's still a tough time. Okay, we'll be praying in that direction, Brother Sherman. Um, any other special prayer requests? Yes, Brother Dewey? Okay, we'll be praying for your sister out there in California. What part of California? Is it, what, what big city is that? Near? Okay. All right. We'll be praying for her, Brother Dewey. Um, any other special prayer requests on the side? Yes, Brother Bob? It's fine. Okay, we'll be, uh, did you say Bethlehem Church of the Brethren? It's right down my street, or road. I guess in Boone's Mill, they're not called streets, they're called roads. Um, but we'll be praying for each of those requests, and for you, Brother Bob, as you represent the Gideon's ministry there and that congregation. Any other special prayer requests? Yes, Miss Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Yes, we need to be praying for Jackie Pierce, uh, Brother and Mrs. Pierce's daughter, who's been in the hospital for about five months. Um, and then uh, Miss Carol Gray. And we do need to continue praying for Miss Faye Beckner as, um, and Miss Barbara Nelson. As, um, and then some of the others that were mentioned on the, the, the phone call this afternoon, I'm sure you all got. Uh, so let's be praying for all of them. Um, anything else that we can take to the Lord in prayer this evening? Anything at all? All right. Um, well, Pastor Andrews, would you open us in a word of prayer? And Pastor Ingers, would you close us? Father in heaven, we thank you tonight, Lord, that we can't stand on your promises and never fail. Amen. Lord, you said to call. Lord, we call you with answers. Help us to accept those answers, Lord, that you said. There's so many tonight that hurt. So, Lord, with loved ones that are dying. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony that some of them on the way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Pray tonight, Lord, as we sit here in your presence that we might realize we are in your presence. And I pray, God, for a special power for compassion. Because, Lord, I know that it is not Brother Brian, but it is the Spirit of God that speaks through you. Thank you, Lord, that he's willing to be that vessel. Then tonight, Lord, we pray for God. We don't understand, Lord, why, but we know, Lord, that all things work together for good of those that love you. We thank you for their testimony that they have throughout the valley. I pray, Father, tonight that you meet the needs of these people, Lord, as only you can see what those needs are. And I pray tonight, Lord, for my brother, uh, Red, Lord, I thank you that I can call him a fellow pastor. I pray, God, the problem with dizziness Mm -hmm. You would clear up, Lord. Yes, Lord. And give him the strength, the Lord, to continue to do what he and Janice have done for so many years. We thank you, Lord, for your love to us. Mm -hmm. We ask now, Lord, that you open our hearts and minds to clear the clutter of the day, that we might hear and that we might praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight, just in the maze, God, in your presence, Lord, as we bow the mic, God, I give you thanks and praise for God, our salvation, for sending your Son, Lord, mm. Jesus Christ, yes, Lord. all of this earth, and of the Lord, the cross, and God, God, in our stead, that we, Lord, might have life and have life. Father, tonight we stand here in that hope, knowing, Father, that God, it's the only hope that anyone has what on the face of this earth. That God will pray that my Brother Ryan speaks to our hearts, Father, that we'll speak to Him. God, the Word will find its place in all of our lives and our hearts. Father, we'll be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, 
Father, we pray tonight uh, on behalf of all of these that have been mentioned. Father, there are many names called here tonight and the different problems. We pray, Father, that you might answer those according to your will. Lord, those that try to need Christ and might even help us say knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. Father, whatever particular need happens to be in their body or about some problem in the home in an individual's life. Father, you might work there. Father, may God, through all of these things, Lord, we all see and realize our need of walking with you, trusting you. Father, as the people meet tonight with these young children, we pray to all that you might bless there. Yes. Father, that you might fill those teachers with the Spirit. Father, may the Holy Spirit of God work tonight. And may the children help us save the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may the Lord you use them uh, throughout their lives. Father, God, the Lord, God, you say. We pray, Lord, that you bless your own church and continue to God work as you have to follow the souls that come to save the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Father, we know you as a personal Savior. God, may we grow in virtue and the admonition of the Lord. Lord, the night of all of your second coming, Father, we can see that you might come. All knowing that we're going on to get peace on this one. We come. Pray for all that come, establish you. God, that you'll glorify yourself. God, that you will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give you that for all you've done, all you do. All we praise you. God, for you will do that in your life. For us in Christ's name, we pray for my goodness. Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm 34 this evening. Psalm 34. And while you're turning there, I um, just want to share some, some uh, blessings that the Lord's been uh, doing uh, concerning this uh, trip coming up in June. Um, but uh, the past couple days, I've been on the telephone um, calling churches from San Diego, California, all the way to St. Augustine, Florida. Um, I've called churches um, in every state but Florida all the way up to Mississippi. And um, just to give you an idea, uh, for each city, all I did is when we had these snow days and everybody was trapped inside their house, um, I would just got on the computer, went to Google, and for each city, so like San Diego, California, I just typed in Baptist churches in San Diego, California. And so a huge list of Baptist churches in that area came up, so I just wrote them all down. And so I've been contacting them. And um, I was kind of discouraged. I, after I called all the churches on my list in San Diego, I got a I didn't have any open door, so I was just kind of frustrated, and then as soon as I called the next city, El Centro, California, the first church I called, the pastor said, we'd love to have you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's on a Monday evening. They're gonna, they even say they're going to feed us, so even more, praise the Lord, uh, in my end. But anyway, so we have uh, four scheduled meetings. One is in El Centro, California. That'll be June the 2nd. And then in Wickenburg, Arizona, this is a Wednesday, um, so June, I think, the 4th or the 5th, um, in Wickenburg, Arizona, this church, uh, for some reason, I guess a lot of churches uh, these days are in the summer months, they kind of close their Wednesday night services, but this church will not have Wednesday night service in June, but they offer that we could stay in their parking lot, so we're blessed of that. And then um, I called up the, been going through, and so I got to contact a lot of churches, but you know how it is, uh, the pastor's not there, or nobody answers the telephone, so you got to uh, leave a message. But I contacted a, a church in Van Horn, Texas, just a little town, and this pastor said, you're going to do what now? <laughs> I said, yes, you heard me right. He said, I think it's a cool idea. We'll have you come. And so we're going to be able to go to this church. It's, it's not a Baptist church, actually. I did call the Baptist church in that city, but couldn't get an answer. So I called the, uh, this Van Horn Community Church, and we're going to get to go to this church and present what we're doing on a Wednesday night in June and share what God's doing. And then in Del Rio, Texas, is a, is a full Sunday. It's our only rest day. It's the 14th of June. We're going to be in Del Rio, Texas at First Baptist Church of that area. And this, this church has a gymnasium, and the pastor said that we're going to be able to stay in their gym, so we'll get a break of tents and the RV. Um, but also on that Sunday... He's going to allow us to play a part in the morning services and maybe help out with Sunday school, but they don't have a Sunday evening service. So I said, well, pastor, I know you don't have Sunday evening service, but 
how about, how about you think about doing this? So I said, what if we had a one-day vacation Bible school there at your church, and we got all the kids and your church, all the teenagers, to bring their bicycles to the church? And I said, then we take them on a one- to two-mile ride, and then come back and then have a gospel message with them. He said, I think it's a really cool idea. He said, we'll have to think about it and pray about it. So we'll be praying about that meeting. And then, uh, so we got meetings scheduled, but what I want you to be praying for is I want you to be praying for California, the state of California, the state of Arizona, the state of New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, um, and Florida. Those are the city, those are the states we're going to be going through. We actually won't be staying the night in Alabama. We'll go from Hurley, Mississippi, straight into Pensacola, Florida. So we'll just be crossing through Alabama. But just be praying for these states that, that God would open up doors, that, that the churches would return my phone calls, and that um, we'll be able to schedule meetings um, so that we can raise gospel awareness and just share the gospel of Christ in these cities and, and strengthen some of these churches. And um, so just be praying about that. I just thought I'd like to share that with you this evening since you're helping us out and so you can be praying more specifically for it. Um, I'm really excited about what is going to be going on. And if you, if you have a computer at home, you know, you have Facebook, go on the Facebook page. But also, uh, thanks to Brother Matthew Dunbar, we have a site, bikingtheusa.org. You can go on there, has some pictures, and it lists some details about, about the trip. And, and so go on there, check it out. And so you can be praying for our, for our, our ministry this June. We're excited about it. And also, um, if you do got your Bibles... Um, Psalm 34, I would ask that you'd stand as we honor the reading of God's Word this, this evening. Psalm 34, we'll be reading um, each of the 22 verses this evening. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 22, and you just follow along with me as I read this passage aloud. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye His saints, for there is no want to them that fear Him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days? that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from me, excuse me, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. Let us pray together. Father, we thank You for the reading of Your Word this evening. And God, as we seek to get better acquainted with this text, Father, we do ask that You would help us, Father, to see what You'd have for us this evening. God, we pray that You'd open our eyes. God, we ask that You'd open our ears. And Father, we pray most of all You'd open up our hearts so that we could receive Your Word this evening. Father, I confess that I am nothing uh, more than just a sinner that's been saved by the grace of God. And God, I need you to empower me with your spirit this evening. And Father, speak through me in a great and mighty way. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I'd like for you to take note of verse 13. 
As I have been meditating here in this passage, I believe that verse 13 is the key pivotal verse of this psalm. Yes, there's some great verses in this psalm, marvelous verses, but I believe that that verse 13 sticks out more than any of the others. And I want you to notice the first phrase of verse 13. It says, keep thy tongue from evil. This evening, I would like to label my thoughts with those words. Keep thy tongue from evil. By means of introduction, I want you to notice the, um, the, the words found uh, right before verse number 1. We believe that these words before verse number 1 are part of the Scriptures because they are, they are contained in the original autographs of the Word of God. And they were preserved. And it says, a psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. This is the historical background of the psalm. Now, where is this found? Well, I'm glad you asked this evening. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to take them and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 21. And we're just going to read a, a brief portion of, of 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 through the, through the end of the of the, of the chapter. 1 Samuel 21, verse 10, all the way to the end of the chapter. Verses 10 through 15. 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15. And, and within this text, we find the setting of the psalm, we believe. And in 1 Samuel chapter 21, a lot is going on in the life of David here, but, but verse number 10 says, And David arose after he, was, after he obtained the sword that Goliath used in battle. The, the Bible says, And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, notice these words, and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? That ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? Now read verse 1 of 22 with me. It says, And David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. We find in this passage, in this historical setting of Psalm uh, 34, we believe that is, that David is, is here in this passage, he goes to another land, and there he begins to say things that he normally wouldn't say. He began to get frustrated and angry and mad. Have you ever been there? We have all been mad. We all have. But aren't you glad that we can, can be angry and sin not? The Bible says, let not the, the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. We quote that verse, Ephesians 4.27, Neither give place to the devil, but the immediate context is about anger and how we give place to the devil when we let the sun go down upon our wrath. That is, when we are angry and frustrated and we don't make peace with our relationships in our lives. So we find David begins to, to scrabble on the doors of the wall. Of the gates. That is, he, he took uh, uh, some type of writing utensil or a knife or something and began to, to, to write things in the gates. And then the Bible says that, that, that he let his spittle fall down upon his beard. That is, either it was his food that he was eating, he was just letting it fall down onto his beard, or his own saliva. How's that a picture for great King David for you? We find in the scriptures, men as great as David still have faults in life. Men as spiritual as David still have times of running from God. And here in this scene, we find David goes to the cave, and, and it could be there at this cave where he begins to write this psalm. And he looks back and, of what he did, and, and, he, and he begins to, to bless the Lord and, and seek God's forgiveness in his life. I want you to notice this key verse, verse 13. It says, keep thy tongue from evil 
and thy lips from speaking guile. Evil is anything that's not good. Evil is anything that does not edify or encourage one another. Guile. It means fraud or deception. That is, deceiving somebody with our words is what guile means. So here the Bible says to keep our tongues from evil and our lips from speaking guile. I don't know about you, but as I was meditating here in this verse, I couldn't help but, but just be convicted of the Holy Spirit of God just because of the, the, the things that I've said in my mind and some of the things that I've let come out of my mouth recently. May God help us all to keep our tongues from evil and our lips from speaking guile. The message this evening is simple. Let's keep our tongues from evil. I know everybody's asking the question. Well, Brother Brian, how can we keep our tongues from evil? Well, it is that question that I would like to answer this evening through our text, through our passage. There's four ways I believe this passage delivers to us how we can keep our tongues from evil. In verses 1 through 3, we're going to discover... We can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. In verses 4 through 8, we will observe that we can keep our tongues from evil by seeking the Lord consistently. Verses 9 through, th through 16, excuse me, we, we will discover we can keep our tongues from evil by fearing the Lord constantly. And then verses 17 through 22, we will discover we can keep our tongues from evil by trusting the Lord completely. With these thoughts in mind, I want you to note the book of James chapter 3, or James chapter 2. No, it is James chapter 3 where it speaks of the tongue. And there, it says that our tongue is an unruly evil. It boasts us proud things, great things, and oh, a great matter, a little tongue, a little, a little instrument can cause the Bible says there in that passage, James writing, and he says that we put bits in the horse's mouth to control them, and the, the whole ship is controlled by just a little small helm. But the tongue, the Bible says, is an unruly evil. In fact, James said by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, no man can tame the tongue. It's interesting, in James chapter 3, how the writer connects the bits that is put in the horse's mouth. My, my grandfather loves horses, loves them, has some of his own, and he takes care of them and all these different things, loves to ride them and do everything with them. But, but the way you control a horse when you're riding is by putting a little bit in its mouth. And you tell it when to go left, when to go right. The same thing with that ship. The steering wheel is connected to that helm underneath, and when you turn the steering wheel, it, it, it connects with the helm, and it, and it goes in the sea. And our lives, believe it or not, are really controlled by our tongues, in a sense. Just as we control the horses with the bits and the ships with the helm, the Bible says that those things are tamed. But there's one thing that no man in this earth can tame, and that is his tongue. That is in our own flesh. We can't control what we say. But with God's help, and when we resist the flesh and say yes to the Spirit, we'll be able to speak the way God would have us to speak. So this evening, will you come with me as we travel through this passage about how David, he, he began to say things that he shouldn't have said, and then... Here in this psalm, he doesn't focus on his sin, but he focuses on the God who he praises. So notice, it says in verse number one, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. As I was reading these three verses, I wrote down, we can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. We can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. He says, I will bless the Lord sometimes. He says, I will bless the Lord most of the time. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> so can you imagine? Even when he said something he shouldn't have said, even when he was acting a fool, as modern society likes to say, in front of all those people in that other land, 
writing on the wall, letting food come out of his mouth and his saliva and slobber. There he was. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And he says, for his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's so interesting. Over and over and throughout this psalm, the mouth is mentioned. Now, it may not be mentioned specifically with the word mouth, or with the word tongue, or with the word lips. But, but notice throughout the Scripture, we'll see where it says he cried. And he, he spoke to the Lord, and, and these other ways. But, but the only way to cry out to the Lord is with our tongues. Whether we speak to Him in our minds, in our heads silently, or we speak out loud to Him. He says in verse 2, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I can't think of any other verse, but that would go with verse number 2 of Psalm 34. But what Paul said, he says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of Jesus Christ. That the only time we should, we should, we should receive glory in a sense is when we're doing the work of God, and that is we direct it back to Him. That is, if somebody comes up and says, that was a great Sunday school lesson, that was a great song, that was a great this, that was a great that. Well, to God be the glory. When we don't give God the glory, then we will be smitten with the judgment of God, like Mr. Uh, Herod in the book of Acts. Notice he says, he says, I will bless the Lord. His praise shall be in my mouth continually. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. That if, if, if I'm going to boast in anything, if I'm going to be proud about anything, it's that I can praise my God for what He's done in my life. He says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt His name together. It says bless. It says praise. It says magnify. It says exalt. All synonyms for worshiping God, for praising God, blessing God. <laughs> so many times in, in Bible colleges, when preachers get with preachers, you just don't really know what's going to happen. And they'll just say, bless God this and bless God that. And, and really, it's not really blessing God. It's just they're in a preaching spell. But, but today, as David is saying, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Over in Psalm 103, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. That is, give blessings to God. He gives blessings to us. So let's sing praise to Him, in other words. So, so how can we keep our tongues from evil? Well, let me just say this. It begins by praising the Lord continually. <laughs> if, if we spend time praising God daily and continually, then we won't be concerned about speaking evil and guile. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. May God help us here at Cleaver Baptist Church. May God help us to spend time praising God. You know, if we were to spend time praising God, we would cease persecuting the people of God with our words. If, if we would spend time praising God with our words, we would, we would cease to execute one another with our words. If we were to praise God with our words, then we would cease to destroy one another with our words. Have you ever noticed that in Baptist churches, at one moment we could be in a service, I mean, we could just be meeting with God, the Holy Spirit makes His manifestation with us in a very special way. And then no sooner than the, than the closing prayer and the amen is said and the saints go marching out, then there we go, back to speaking evil and guile. Praise the Lord continually is how we can keep our tongues from evil. Will you come with me as we adventure through verses 4 through 8? In verses 1 through 3, we discovered when we, we can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. But notice here a second statement of how we can keep our tongues from evil is found in verses 4 through 8. As I was meditating in these five verses, I wrote down this statement. We can keep our tongues from evil by seeking the Lord consistently. We can keep our tongues from evil by seeking the Lord consistently. Let me just say this. 
Uh, verses 1 through 3 lead up to verses 4 through 8. And when we begin to praise God continually, you know what we're going to do? When we, when we seek to worship God here and praise Him in spirit and in truth and services, then, then we'll want to praise Him in our cars. We'll want to praise Him in our houses. We'll want to praise Him anywhere and everywhere. We'll want to praise Him in the shower. Hallelujah. Sing praises from, from everything from rock of ages to blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. But when we begin to praise Him, then we will adventure out into the unknown and we'll do what David's did. We'll seek the Lord. He says, I sought the Lord and He heard me. Let me just, let me just ask you something this evening. This word sought is a synonym for seek. <laughs> so, so, if, so if we're seeking Somebody, like when we play hide and seek with young people, we go find them by moving to their destination. But here, the Bible says that, that I sought the Lord and He heard me. How can you seek somebody and they hear you? Well, it's by speaking to them. So here in our text, we find that, that, that the whole theme of this psalm is about our words and our lips. And he says, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. There David, he was probably fearful because man began to look at him and say, Oh David, oh wow, this is the, this is the man after God's own heart and, and you were, were acting the way you were acting in front of the, the other nations and you were scribbling on the gate of the place and you were, you were letting your food and slobber and saliva fall out of your mouth and your beard. And he begins to say, oh, God, help me and deliver me. And he delivered him from all his fears. Perhaps God can deliver us from the fear of sinning with our mouths if we were just to seek him like David saw him. Verse 5 says, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. Now, I know that he didn't just cry with tears here. He cried with his words. Because the Bible says that the Lord heard him. There we go again with the mouth. And the Bible says in verse number 4, and the Bible says in verse number 6, that this man was saved from his troubles and delivered from his fears. So I submit to you this evening that, that we don't have to be fearful about what's going to come out of our mouths as long as we're praising the Lord continually and seeking the Lord consistently. One thing about my life and, and, and I, that I've just noticed is that some days, oh man, I mean, I'm walking close with God very consistently. And then some weeks, man, I'm just going to tell you, I'm a little ways away from God. Maybe you're like that this evening. But I just want to encourage you. That consistency is proficiency. We will live a proficient life as a Christian when it is consistent in our relationship with God. Verse 7. Here's something that some people don't believe in. They don't believe in angels. Did you know Touched by an Angel is one of the most popular television shows recent years. Millions of people watched it. But notice what verse 7 says. It says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Now, I, I want you to notice, sometimes in Scripture, the, the, the term the angel of the Lord is literally referring to Jesus Christ. So, so, I mean, it could be possible that there David is in this cave, maybe, and there the Lord Jesus Christ just surrounds him and delivers him from his trouble. Whether it, it was Jesus Christ or not, I can't affirm that with you. But, but all I can say is this, that, that, if, that if you do not believe that God sends his angels for protection over his people, then you need to open up the Word of God and read it for yourself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I like this verse. We have a cookie jar at our house, and it says Psalm 34, 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So every time we reach in that jar to get a cookie, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every Baptist ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Amen to that. 
But it says, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So verses one through three, we discovered we can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. Verses four through eight, we learn we can keep our tongues from evil by seeking the Lord consistently. But come with me and let's look at verses nine through 16. And as we travel through these verses, we discover this truth and this way of how we can keep our tongues from evil. We can keep our tongues from evil by fearing the Lord constantly. We can keep our tongues from evil by fearing the Lord constantly. I want you to notice in verse number seven, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. In verse number nine, it says, Oh, fear the Lord ye his saints. The Bible says, it goes on to say in verse number nine, For there is no want to them that fear him. The Bible says fear over and over here in this text. And we can learn this evening that, yes, we'll begin praising the Lord. And that'll keep our tongues from evil. We'll begin seeking the Lord about how He'd want us to speak and how He'd want us to live. But then we'll begin to fear the Lord as we begin in this journey of trying to tame and control our tongues. The Bible says that, that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Some days I feel like those young lions. Man, you ever been there where you just eat a whole meal and then it just felt like you didn't eat anything at all? But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You know what that means? That means when, when we seek the Lord by fearing Him, by praising Him, and and by trusting in Him, then we will not need, we, we will only need Him. That's all we'll ever need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When God's our shepherd, when He's the Lord of our life, we have everything we need. So for all those so-called Christians who need this, and who need that, and, and etc., I just marvel. Because I, don't, I know I don't have a mansion in Beverly Hills, California. I know I don't drive a fancy, schmancy car from, uh, from the Mercedes dealership right over here. I know that. I know that, that, that my bank account doesn't have um, seven digits in it. But all I do know is that I have God, Jesus Christ as my Savior. And that's all I need. The Bible goes on to say, Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you, notice what it says, the fear of the Lord. Throughout the Psalms and the Proverbs, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if we want to be wise, we need to fear the Lord. <laughs> Does that mean we, we're afraid of Him? Not in a sense. It means we revere Him. Fear means to revere. It also means to honor and respect. And we have honor, we reverence God, and we, re we, we have respect for God. And we also realize that just like as I was a child and I disobeyed my father's commandments in a sense, that I was, was afraid of the judgment of my dad. Well, in a sense, that when we truly fear God, we'll revere him, but we'll also fear his judgment and will desire to say the right things according to his word. We'll desire to live the right way according to his word. So he goes on to say, What is man? What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may be good? Now, that question is followed by our key verse. It says, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. What is man that he desireth life, that he desires to love many days, that he may see good? Do you enjoy life? You want to have a good life? You want to, see, you want to live to, to, have, a, to have, a, have a great life? Well, the psalmist says, here's how you do it. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. He says, depart from evil and do good. 
Seek peace and pursue it. It begins by fearing God. And when we fear God, we'll, we'll be obedient by speaking what God would have us to speak. He says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. There we go again with the word cry. We're speaking out to God. And then the Bible says in verse 16, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Do you want to speak evil with your tongues? Do you want to speak guile with your lips? Or do you want to speak good with your lips? Do you want to speak encouragement with your mouths? Verses 1 through 3, we discover we can keep our tongues from evil by praising the Lord continually. In verses 4 through 8, we discover we can keep our tongues from evil by, by seeking the Lord consistently. And then verses 9 through 16, we discovered we can keep our tongues from evil by fearing the Lord constantly. But may I give you a fourth and final statement this evening of how we can keep our tongues from evil found in verses 17 through 22. As I was meditating here in these final verses, I wrote down this last pivotal statement of application. We can keep our tongues from evil by trusting the Lord completely. We can keep our tongues, excuse me, we can keep our tongues from evil by trusting the Lord completely. Have you trusted the Lord completely with your life? Have you trusted the Lord completely with, with your salvation? Well, notice what verse 17 says. It says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. That's found also in verse 14, also found in, ver I mean, verse 4, and also in verse 6. And we find that, that, that whenever the righteous, that is, those who, who, who have a relationship with God, in David's context, they were Jewish people who knew Jehovah as their Savior in a sense. But in our context, it is Messianic Jews or it is Gentile believers who know God as, and know Jesus Christ as their Savior. The Bible goes on to say here, it says, verse 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. I remind of what Psalm 51, where David penned some very similar words. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Isn't that a statement? Isn't that a phrase? You can't live a drug lifestyle, addicted to, to alcohol and marijuana and crack cocaine and, and have, a, have, a, have a terrible lifestyle of that and go deep into sin without being destroyed by those within it. If you're a drug dealer and you mess up in one of your deals, well, somebody's come after your life and your money and your bank account. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. But notice verse 22. I love this verse. It says, The Lord redeems the soul of His servants, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. <laughs> a desolation is like a place that has been totally destroyed. But I declare to you that, that we can keep our tongues from evil by trusting the Lord completely. I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb as we sing in our, the song in our hymnal. And I'm here to tell you today that I will never be a desolate.